Hi everybody, I am Cheryl Pete, the Clinical Director at the Art Therapy Studio, and today we bring you another edition of Expressive Art Thursday. I have a special guest today, a member of the Art Therapy Studio Board of Directors. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hey everybody, my name is Nikkei Olabisi Green. I am um, the newest member of the Art Therapy Studio Board and so grateful to uh, be part of such an amazing organization that does such important work in our community. Um, I'm also the chief catalyst creator at NOLA Movement, um, and that is where I ignite the fire that's already inside women to um, move their bodies and really inspire them to create lives that they love. So I am also uh, part of the Larchmere, Buckeye Shaker um, community. So it was such a great fit to um, find the art therapy studio and get to understand their work and then to join their board. And we're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for being a part of our organization and also doing the work that you do because it's so important. So are you ready to make some art? I'm excited. All right, let's do it. Um, so for those of you that are following along at home, today we are going to talk about drawing mandalas. Um, if you're not familiar with mandalas, we see them a lot in um, adult coloring books these days. Um, it is a circular piece of artwork. Um, they often represent wholeness or completeness, and you see them in a lot of different cultures. Um, they are really healing to draw, and it's, it's very relaxing but getting started can be kind of intimidating. So these are a few examples of some mandalas that I have created. Um, and often when I talk to people about making these, they say, I, I can't do that. So today, um, we're just gonna kind of go step by step through how you draw one of these. And you can do it with really basic materials. Um, we just need a little bit of paper. We're gonna work small today. So this piece is two and a half by three and a half. It's the size of what's called an artist trading card. It's a convenient size to drop in an envelope and send to somebody that you care about. You can even swap these back and forth. Um, and then some kind of drawing utensil. So you can use a pencil, you can use a ballpoint pen, you can use a gel pen. If you have a felt tip pen laying around, that's fine too. If you wanna get really, um, creative when you're done and you want to pull some colored pencils out, you can have colored pencils. Um, but today we're just going to start with a pen. So Nikkei, you have one as well, I believe? I do. Excellent. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to just tilt my screen down a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, I may need to put a little contrast in here. That might be better. All right. So. The first thing, okay, that I want you to do is estimate the center of your piece of paper and just draw a little dot. Now oh, my pen's not working. Let me find a different one. And then once you have that dot, just draw a circle around your dot. Just a little one. I call this a seed. And this is where the mandala is going to grow from. Sweet. It's a, it's a, um, you work from the center and go out. And really what we're going to do now is we're going to just start making up little patterns. So an easy way to start if you don't know where to start is to just draw some little lines like you were drawing um, a sun. So I'm gonna draw eight little lines coming out of my, um, and hopefully everybody can see this. Here we go, that's what I have so far. <laughs> I've already probably, well, I won't say I messed it up, but I've already like gone a little bit different. <laughs> That's okay, and there's and that's and that's the beauty of this is I have never I don't think I've ever drawn one that's the same as one I've drawn before. So you can do your own thing and go in whatever direction that you want. And the reason that we use a pen is because it encourages you to take what oh that's beautiful um, to take what we might think of as a mistake and think creatively around it. Um, 
So now you're going to build on what you started with a series of different lines. So for this one, I'm not sure with the angle here. Let's, let's do this. I'm going to draw kind of a triangle shape that connects these lines. You can do arches, you can do squares, you can do little circles, you can color them in. But you're just going to keep building out. And while we're working on this, um, I'm going to say just a little bit about using art for um, relaxation and healing. This is something that anybody can do. Um, you hear a lot about the different ways that people use art. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm so excited. <laughs> See, I told you it was easy. Yeah, it's already coming out better than I could have imagined. <laughs> Keep up the good work. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. Girl. No, no, I'm glad that you did. Um, what, I, what I just kind of was wanting to say is that, um, you know, things like coloring or drawing at home or making art at home, all of those things are, are very therapeutic, um, but they're not necessarily art therapy. And the reason that I kind of wanted to talk about the difference is because art therapy is, is, is a fairly new mental health field and really has been around since the 60s, um, maybe a little earlier, and um, depending on, you know, the different formats. And, and what I really want to talk about is the fact that what makes art therapy art therapy is really the relationship with the art therapist. And so many forms of art are therapeutic, but to really have an art therapy experience, you're working with an art therapist that is trained. And the training is similar to um, what a counselor or social worker would have. You have to have a master's degree to be an art therapist. And art therapists are trained not only in um, different types of techniques, to help other people and, and listen, but also in different types of media and making choices about what kind of art media is best for different circumstances and ways to use art to help people heal. What you'll notice in a, in a program with an art therapist as opposed to an art instructor is that the art therapist is focused on the process of making art and what somebody gets out of that and the story that they're telling, as opposed to being really focused on technique and creating things that are um, beautiful. And you'll hear me say a lot of times, um, if you um, work with me, that I, I will say to somebody, that's a really great piece of art. And they'll say, well, it's terrible, it's a stick person. And I say, but it tells the story. And I think that's really important to know because that's what we're really about is telling the story. And it doesn't have to be something that hangs in an art gallery for centuries to be good at that. We can use art to tell a story. Um, and I'm fond of saying that life isn't always beautiful, so I don't think art should always be beautiful. Mm, I love that. But the, um, the thing that, that I think is important to know is what we're doing with these Facebook videos and some of the other programs is showing how Art is something that you can use at home as a tool to help yourself, but it's not necessarily art therapy because it's not a two-way conversation that we're having with each and every um, one of our viewers. Um, I, I think that's important because if you are finding that during this time or any time you're really struggling, that that's when we want you to reach out to us so that we can get you directly connected to an art therapist to really help you even more if, if you need it. And Cheryl, when would you say that someone should maybe reach out to an art therapist as opposed to 
um, maybe a more traditional therapist or like, you know, use one of the apps or find, you know, a therapist that they would sit down with on like a couch and not in like, not necessarily have the art piece. Sure. Um, you know, I think that therapy in general is a really personal journey. And so because no people, two people are alike, it's very different. So I think the most important thing is for people to trust their guts Mm. and decide what feels right to them. Some of the advantages of art therapy um, are that, you know, you have more tools in your toolbox. When you go to a traditional therapist, um, you have the advantage of their knowledge in um, psychology and how to talk about difficult things. An art therapist can do those things, but also you have the additional tool of using art. And art actually activates a different part of our brains as you, um, well, well known, okay, because movement does the same thing. And when we are experiencing really difficult circumstances, sometimes it's hard to find the words to describe what we're going through. And art is a way that we can express those experiences without finding words. And so I would encourage anybody that has found that talking about something has not been helpful to them to consider a creative arts therapy. Art's not the only kind. There's music, there's dance movement therapy, there um, is drama therapy, there are, there are other forms, but it's a different way to express yourself. And what's really great is you don't have to be good at any of those things. Being creative is a natural human response and creativity comes in a lot of different ways. I've actually, I've never thought about it that way because doing something like this is not necessarily, I wouldn't consider myself good, but that doesn't mean that I don't get to enjoy this, like the practice of making art and making something while, though it might not turn out as beautiful as, you know, someone else who maybe has a more, like a different refinement or a different skill level, like I still get to partake in the joy and the therapy that comes from this practice. So I've, I've never thought about it that way. And I really love that you, you said that. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's really important to remember because a lot of times we believe that you have to have a certain background or certain training or certain certain innate skill to make art Mm -hmm. and the truth is is everybody can make art Mm -hmm. and you know if you look at children very small children don't think about whether or not they're good enough to make art they want to draw they want to do those things it's it's only when we get older and become more self-critical that we start comparing what we've done to other people and Mm -hmm say, well, I'm not good at that, so I'm not going to do it. Yep. So are you noticing anything as you work on your mandala? Um, I'm noticing that I'm like, like triangles. There's a lot of triangles happening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Me too. Um, I'm noticing, I'll just show you like in where I'm at. Oh, that's lovely. Thanks. I'm noticing, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because I'm, I'm like participating in this. I'm like creating this. I'm also coaching myself because where I see like lines that aren't straight or that aren't perfect, I'm like telling myself like, hey, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Does it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm, I'm both noticing some of the, uh, the dissymmetry. I don't know if that's word. It's not symmetrical. I'm noticing that, but also like le- reminding myself that that's okay. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Where it's not like as balanced to my eye aesthetically as I would like it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, just to reference another thing you said at the beginning, 
you know, life isn't always beautiful and art doesn't always have to be beautiful either. And, um, you know, it's like, it's, it's still cool. I'm like smiling as I'm looking at this thing that I created. I'm like, what do I want to add next? Yeah. Let me just flip my screen back up. And you can see in the case still working, which is wonderful. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you what I ended up coming up with. Sometimes I'll put a little border around it when it's done or this one. I just added some little spots around the outside. So if you want, you can decorate around the outside. Like I said earlier, you can add color if you want to. And just start to play. So I know you're not done yet, but can you show us what you have so far, Nikkei? Totally. Yay. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Very nice. Are you happy with it? I am. It's beautiful. I actually like am feeling really inspired to make some more. And then I'm going to write some like positive affirmations on the back for myself. I'm going to like keep oh. Like create like a little series of them. I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, if you want, once you have a bunch of them made, um, we actually did a um, affirmation card video um, a while back with Bree, and you can punch a hole in the corner of each one and tie them together with a ribbon or something if you'd like. Love it. So, excellent. So I will let you keep working on those. Um, but we're gonna sign out for now. So I just wanna thank you for being with us today and taking the time to make some art with us and show everybody one of the things that we can do and um, look forward to hearing more about what's happening with NOLA Movement and working with you more on the board. Cool, thank you so much, Cheryl. This is, this is a new practice that I get to add to my tool belt. So um, Yay. unexpected surprise for me today. So thank you for your gifts and talents and energy and for all the work that you do in our community. My pleasure. Thank you for being with us and being a part of our community, Nikkei. Have a beautiful day. We'll see ya. Thank you. Bye.